The Missouri River has been wreaking havoc across northwest Missouri, blowing out levees and dumping sand and debris across some of the richest farmland in the world. Even with waters receding, many farmers are struggling to see a way forward. This sounds all too familiar to farmers downriver who saw the same thing happen to their fields 26 years ago. Bill Mazook farms in the river bottoms east of Herman. Well, I still don't sleep in a thunderstorm since 1993. I mean, it, it, was, it was just a devastating thing and it, it ran through here for a month, over two months. And at that point, you're just, you just don't hardly know what to do. I mean, it's just, it's a depression that, that is undescribable because you don't feel like there's anybody there that you can turn to for advice or, or how do you explain this to your banker? How do you, how do you uh, come up with a plan to, to put a crop back in? They were working awful hard at taking land out of production and, and, and away from the farmers. And, and I personally grew up here, lived here, farmed this all my life. And I really would like for my kids and my grandkids to be able to farm. And I just refused to let somebody come and buy my land for nothing and turn it into to something unusable. Some local farmers thought that there must be other options to keep the farmland alive rather than give up on the river bottoms. In 93, a lot of people plowed with deep plows, six foot plows, some plowed with disc plows. They'll, you can, you can turn over two foot of sand and maybe catch a little dirt. And I, my, a lot of my neighbors did some of that. And I did a little of that on some of my thinner sand. And then we got to the point where we just couldn't do anything with, with this other land. And, and I was talking to a contractor friend of mine and he's, he said, well, he had talked to an old guy one time and said the only way he had ever seen anybody save a piece of ground like that is with a track hoe. And so we took $5,000 and let him dig till that $5,000 was up and then grew a crop on it. And we were pretty satisfied with that. But after that, we bought a bigger track hoe with a bigger bucket because it just does a lot better job of mixing the dirt. Find the biggest bucket you can find because it does the best job of mixing and it goes the fastest. You can get the most acres an hour with it. And big equipment is cheaper than little equipment. It just costs more to fix it. But you, you know, like at the end of the day, you get way more acres done. You get a way bigger job, better job of mixing the dirt and sand and you'll end up with a, with a lot higher quality field when you get done. After the original hole, you, can, you go down to the bottom of the hole and you get into the black dirt and you dig the black dirt and you roll the bucket and the sand starts rolling off of the bucket immediately back into the, into the spot you just dug out of and, or where you're gonna put the dirt. And then by the time you make that motion and turn the bucket back over, it's mixed that good dirt and the sand together in that one motion. Uh, so that makes it a lot faster, whereas once you break eight feet, then you get into more of a, of a two dig situation, and so your time gets long, it takes more time. And it's kind of, I mean, it, it's gonna vary, but like I said, if you can get six feet or less, you can make, you can do a lot of digging in a day's time and it doesn't seem like much until you've gone away for two days and come back and, and look at what the man's done. It, it's a lot. Back in 2016, Bill's track hoe didn't have a whole lot of work going on, so he asked me if I would like to do some dirt work because he was right there in the area. You know, I never thought I'd be able to turn 11 to 15 feet of sand under and make it, produ and make it productive again, but you can, because I've seen it. We We've had ground go from zero to, to 180 bush of corn. Eight feet or less sand on it, it's gonna cost somewhere between two and $3,000 an acre. And that should, it, that's about what I think with my equipment and that low, that high lift to level it is costing us to put it back into production. You know, cost is gonna vary, it depends on what, how, you know, what they charge you or what, what kind of how fancy of equipment you buy and how many acres you're gonna do with it. Uh, 
I mean, we like I say, we've done 500 acres with these two pieces of equipment, and uh, the more I do, the, the more excited I get about it. I mean, think about it, if you have a piece of ground that can grow 15 bushel beans versus 70 bushel beans, it doesn't take too long to get your 2,500 back. Plus, once it's done, unlike a pivot, you don't have to put fuel and maintenance in it. Once it's done, it's done. Take a look at it, assess what you have, and then kind of go from what you think you where you want to be in five years with it and where you want to be in 10 years with it. It's, it's going to be, it's not going to be an overnight process. It's going to take some time. So I think what you need to do is kind of look at the future, what you, where you think you want to be and you want to bring this ground back in production and you have some kids or grandkids that want to farm. Well, you know, if you can bring that ground back in production, that's great. Giving up is absolutely the wrong thing to do because there's no way out from that.